Okay, so now we are going to start with the analysis of our, analysis of our trust structures in Caramba. And the first thing that I've done is to hide our all our tags, right? To make it more clear, feel free to do the same with the model view component. And now let's get our analyze component into the grasshopper canvas. So of course, again, we need to connect the out output of the assemble model component here and connect it back. Oops, uh, connect it back here. Okay, perfect. And now we can see how our trust structure starts to, to deflect and we can hide the, the forces to start off, but we can see how the analysis is working, right? So this could be my, my deflection. So feel free. What we are going to do is to hide this input geometry to see it more, to see more clearly what it have, what is happening here. So let's do basically that. Okay. So it looks nice. And of course, feel free to play with the height, with the length, and you can see how the stiffness of this uh, truss changes, of course, when we change the height and, and so on and so forth. And we can play with the subdivisions and with the line load. But I think that this is going to be um, quite interesting when we start playing with the section forces. So what we are going to do is first to check that we don't have any bending moments here. So let's go for it. And that's right. Since we have defined our pin connections, we can see that the bending moments are zero at each point, right? Because of our joints here and because of that, this is a truss structure, which are triangular elements and so on and so forth. Okay, right. And now we are going to display the axial forces like that. But the thing is, that, okay, first of all, it looks a bit confusing if we want to take a look into the load values. We are going to see a trick to simplify this later on, but first let's take a look qualitatively to these um, forces, right? So we are going to deselect the numbers options. We now just need to check whether we have compression or tension forces. And as we were seeing before, these are uh, Let's actually, let's even um, deselect the deformation. So this is a Pratt thrust, a Pratt typology. And as we were seeing, we are going to have um, tension forces in the lower chord, compression forces in the upper chord, and we are going to have our diagonals under um, tension, right? Because they will, they would be following the shape of a cable. And we can check it here because we can see that we have tension forces which are positive and compression forces with are negative in blue color, right? We also have these two bars here with which don't have any force at all, as we were seeing. And what we can do is to change the thrust topology from Pratt to Hole. And now our, our my diagonal is under, under compression, and this is very interesting. And the upper chord is under compression and the lower chord under tension, right? And we can also check the warrant thrust in which the <laughs> force changes from these diagonals who are parallel to this arch, which are under compression, and the other ones that are parallel to a um, virtual cable, which are under tension. Okay, so that's very interesting. And now let's take an actual look into the values of these forces. So for that, there are two possibilities. We can click on this numbers option here, but the thing is that this is a bit confusing, right? We have too many values. We can try using these render setting options to um, uh, to make this bigger, this, this parameter bigger, like length divided by segment. In this case, if we make this bigger, we can get that we have at, uh, now two force values for each element, but, uh, but it still looks a bit confusing, at, at, at least for me, right? Because ideally, we would need this uh, force value in the middle of our elements. So what I'm going to do is to tell you a trick how we can make it to display the forces, not at both ends, but just with one force value in the center of our elements. So what we're going to do is to get the um, beam forces component here. And with this component, we are getting the uh, compression forces for its element here. So now what we need to do, and of course we get two values here, but they are always the same because Trusses work just under axial forces and they are applied as, as nodal loads. So the force is constant throughout the whole element. So 
let's get the first value of these forces. Or, I mean, if you, if you don't trust me, <laughs> we could also use the average component in order to make the, do the average of both force values. Okay. So anyway, let's flatten the outputs. This could be the force values that we want to display here. And now what we are going to do is to get the uh, text tag component. So text tag 3D, that should be it. So for this component, we need, that's right, the value or, or the, the tag that we want to display, but we also need the location. So this would be my value here, which is text, and we need the location. And the location this is going to be in the XC plane, right? This is the, this vertical plane in which we are working now. And we need to find the center point of its element line. And for that, we are getting the, the lines from my elements here. Oops, sorry. And there we go. So these are my lines. And now I need to find the center point. And for that, let's get the point on curve component. And there we go. So this is the center point, and I just need to connect this guy here and this guy here to the location input parameter. So let's hide these um, components. And now <laughs> what we also need to specify is the size, right? So let's specify a size of 0 0.4 in this case. And let's go for it. And now we can see how it's starting to make sense, but, or even 0 0.3, but we have too many decimal values. So in order to remove those um, decimal point values, we can convert this uh, number, these force values, into integers, right? With the integer uh, container. So let's go for it. Let's go for it. And now I think that these force values are much more clear. So we can uh, deselect the numbers option. And this would be the force values for my elements like that okay which i think is very interesting but finally what we also need to do is to specify the uh, justification because what we are going to say is that it is going to be in the middle center of the point so like that perfect 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 okay i think this looks nice and what we can do now is to check if these uh, force values make sense. And for that, for instance, to check the forces in the uh, lower or upper chord, go back to the to the formal book and feel free to use this um, this formula here, which basically uh, says that we are breaking down the moment into this pair of forces in the tension and compression, into tension and compression, right? In the upper and lower chord. And it, and you can use it to calculate the maximum force in our truss, right? So you would get the maximum bending moment and you divide it by this, um, by this height. And this would be the formula, but like the line load multiplied by the span width to the power of two divided by h times this height, this height value, right? Which is very interesting. So feel free to calculate the maximum, um, member force, which is going to happen here in the middle, right? We would have the maximum bending moment as well, but also realize that the span width is to the power of two in this formula and the height is to the power of one, which means that we have this trust here and now the maximum value is, so let's let's uh, fix this guy here. So let's use a line load of um, 50 kilonewton meters and let's start with a span width of 20. So now we can realize like the maximum value is here 862 kilonewtons. And feel free to check it with this formula. But now what happens if I make the, sorry, so let's specify three meters. But now what happens if I make this truss um, as double as high as now? So now if we do it, it instead of 36, we can see how these forces are exactly uh, half as we had before, right? We have now 417. And before we had like 833. So just double as much because of this formula, right? Because the height was to the power of one. However, if we specify the length of 40 instead of 20, we can see how my forces, and, uh, and feel free also to, <laughs> to reduce the, the scale of our forces. So let's even do double click here and the maximum value is going to be 0 0.1 and yeah, like that. Okay, so now you can see how the forces 
are not twice as big, but four times as big, uh, as, as high, right? And this would be four times uh, 830 models, right? What did we have at the beginning? And that's right. And the reason for that is that this span width is to the power of two in that formula. Okay, so that would be it regarding the analysis of trust structures. So of course, feel free to play with the subdivisions and with the uh, all parameters here to <laughs> understand or get a better feeling how trust extractors work. Okay, perfect.